Let us worship together. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where the sadness ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see. Much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned in giving of ourselves that we receive and dying that we're born to eternal life O oh, master grant that i may never see so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to return. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Pat Babanis, and I am a member of the St. Vincent de Paul Society here at St. Mark's. Today we want to thank our pastor, Father Raphael, and all of you, our parishioners, for your amazing generosity to our neighbors in need. We also want to account for our stewardship and give you a little information about what we do. We continue to fa be faced in 2021 being an unusual year. Yet amidst it all, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul offered a steady hand to our most vulnerable neighbors, providing food, rent assistance, utility assistance, and the list could go on and on. Through your faithful gifts to the St. Vincent de Paul Society monthly collection and generous donations from many of you earmarked to St. Vincent de Paul, you provided us with more than $234,700 to assist those in need. Thank you. Because of you, we were able to help over 4,790 neighbors living in Summerfield, Oklawaha, Pedro, and Weirsdale, with unmet needs totaling more than $232,800. During a large portion of the year, we responded to telephone requests for assistance with interviews conducted via the telephone. We have now resumed person-to-person -person contact. Our Vincentians last year performed over 2,100 volunteer hours. Oftentimes, it is the most basic of needs our neighbors seek, food. We distributed bags of food along with items many of us take for granted, such as toothpaste, toilet paper, and diapers, which can bring a smile to our neighbor when we give out these simple but necessary items. Our members also collect your non-monetary donations each month for the St. Vincent de Paul truck from Orlando. Through those donations to the St. Vincent de Paul thrift store, 
the Society is able to continue to provide assistance to neighbors in need throughout the entire diocese. We were able to resume our program of awarding partial scholarships to high school graduates from the forest. We awarded two student scholarships in the amount of 5,000 each. The two mentoring centers in the forest also reopened, and we again were able to support them with snacks and drinks for their after-school program. We have begun assisting a second church in the forest with their children's programs with weekly Wednesday night meals. We were able to again help the St. Vincent de Paul Society Conference of St. Bernadette in Ormond Beach to award two partial scholarships to at-risk girls entering college. Recently, your generosity showed up again in full force through donations to our Thanksgiving turkey card program, which provided 107 families with a blessed Thanksgiving. Through our Christmas giving tree program, 311 children had a magical Christmas, all because of you. Our Giving Tree program gave gifts to local children in our area from Alpha House in Ocala and to assist the St. Bernadette St. Vincent de Paul Conference. Your loving hearts and outstretched arms reached for miles. Our office is open Monday through Thursday. While we deal with the immediate need, we do find among our neighbors those who with some help can break out of the poverty cycle. We provide a systemic change mentoring program that counsels, coaches, and sets monthly goals for jobs, transportation, budgets, and education. We try to provide whatever is needed on their journey to rise above the circumstances with dignity and respect for themselves and others. Vincentians share all of the core values of spirituality, friendship, and service. We continue today to serve the poor through the same method developed by our founder, Blessed Frederick Ozanam. As Matthew Kelly states in his book, Rediscovering the Saints, as Christians, we are all called to have a relationship with the poor. We, as Vincentians, along with each of you here sitting in front, are able to show the working poor the face of Christ. Together, we are the hands and face of Christ to all around us. On behalf of all members of the society, I thank you. All Vincentians carry you in their hearts as we pray for you along with each person in need we meet. God bless you and fill you with his grace as you continue to help the least among us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our parish community and family of St. Mark the Evangelist as we celebrate the Holy Mass on this seventh Sunday in ordinary time. In respect of today's liturgy, please silence your cell phones like me. <laughs> today's celebrant of the Mass is Monsignor Jim, and he's con-celebrated by Deacon Charlie. And this Mass is being offered for the soul of George A. Charles. Please take home a copy of the bulletin and keep up to date with all the exciting special events here at St. Mark. This weekend, please return the Catholic appeal envelopes you received last weekend with your pledge. Every contribution touches countless lives. Your generosity will definitely make a difference. And please consider spending some time with the Lord during the 40 hours of Eucharistic adoration. You'll find a sign-up book in the narthex in the back to cover one hour period starting Sunday, March 6th, after the 12 p.m. Mass, through Tuesday, March 8th, before the 8 a.m. Mass. And the readings for today's liturgy can be found in our Journey Songs Missal at number 948. Thank you. So let us all rise and worship the Lord in song. Welcome our celebrant. Welcome all those who are worshiping with us online. Let us sing all our welcome. Let 
Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell where our hearts learn to forgive. Build the hopes and dreams and vision, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true. Where all God's children dare to seek To dream God's reign anew Here the cross shall stand as a witness And as symbols of God's grace Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus All are welcome, all are welcome all are welcome in this place. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you challenge us to move beyond our natural inclinations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you confront us with provocation and challenging words. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be people of unlimited love, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. We pray these things through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be seated and be attentive to the word of God. A 
A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, Do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Nair, and the troops. And he said, Here's the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, the Lord delivered you into my grasp. I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Everyone, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being. Bless his name. Bless the Lord and forget not his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all our iniquities and comforts all our sorrows, redeems our life from destruction and crowns us with kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, so merciful. Gracious is our God. Slow to anger, abounding in kindness. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man came from earth, earthly. The second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, to you who hear I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the, to the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even the sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give and the lips, gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured on, onto your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. This particular gospel reading is very fortuitous for what is going on today. The world today has become very complex and dangerous. Nations are posturing against other nations with possible consequences to all of mankind. In looking at the news cycles, I can find little attention directed at our Lord's words in addressing mankind's destructive ways. So, in this regard, I find this section, particular section of Luke's Gospel, most challenging, yet most important to all of us, never more important than today. I really do believe that until we start living it, we are inevitably stuck in the never-ending cycle of violence that has plagued our world since Cain killed his brother Abel. 
not just violence between nations, that's our focus obviously, it's been our focus for months, not just violence between nations, religious groups, but also the low level violence of constant provocation and retaliation, gossip, criticism, getting even, passive aggression that happens at a micro level and is a plague on our more regular interactions within families, congregations, workplaces, and so on. Today, the challenge set before us in community is even more demanding. In the gospel, we as believers are called to love our enemies. Something of that love is anticipated in today's first reading, wherein David is featured as not taking an opportunity to kill Saul. However, David's motivation was not necessarily love, but rather mercy and respect for God's anointed. In today's second reading, Paul reminds us that Jesus' calls and challenges become possible for those who remember in whose image they are made. Not only Adam's, but God's. It was Jesus who made God's image and the ways come to life for us. Henry Nouwen, a noted Catholic priest and theologian has described this call as the most radical in the gospel and yet the clearest expression of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Love for one's enemies is the touchstone of being a Christian. Nor do Jesus, nor did Jesus simply leave his call at love your enemies, for surely he knew our human tendency for finding loopholes in seemingly impossible challenges. Jesus understood only too well how human beings lift that challenge out of the reality, out of reality and relegate it to become some sterile and abstract void from which a person could reason. Let me just give you an example. So for example, one might conclude, I love my enemies, but I don't really like them. Think about it. Such reasoning is actually an invasive maneuver. It is a faceless, fearless, mental alibi rather than a personal, impossible, and positive engagement Jesus called for when he qualified the manner in which enemies are to be loved. Do good to those who hate you. Bless them. Pray for them. Turn the other cheek, to name a few. Was Jesus really serious? When Jesus called for love of enemies, surely he hadn't anticipated these global pandemics, the atro 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 atrocities committed in every continent at the present moment, the horrors of ethnic cleansing, pedophilia, serial murder, and gang rape as means of military aggression, how can Jesus be authentically accepted in a world so obviously full of enemies worthy of our hate? Think of it. Father Walter Burgert, a Jesuit priest, long regarded as one of the United States top theologians, framed the question as follows. Responding to Jesus' call becomes possible only when we accept that we learn that love from Jesus. 
He went on to say, he went on to say, to do that, we must be willing to stand beneath the cross. And here a man, God man, murmur through blood-stained lips, Father, forgive them. To whom was Jesus asking forgiveness? Not only for Herod, who despised him, or for Pilate, who handed him over, or the leaders who aroused the crowd to cry out for his crucifixion, or the soldiers who carried out the deed, or the passerby, passerby who mocked him. These were not the only ones that Jesus loved and forgave. Remember the words of St. Paul. While we were still enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of Jesus. Father Baguette further stated that the enemy is not decidedly out there, over there, or back in ancient Palestine. For you see, we are the enemy. The enemy is us. We, all of man, humankind, from Adam on, we are the enemy, transformed by God's love, made known to us in Jesus. With this in mind, let us not continue to divide the world between us and them. In Jesus, the compassionate and loving God who does not deal with us according to our sins has become God with us and God within us. According to Father Bagat, that presence of God with and within makes available our grace to love enemies. He goes on to say, God even gives the grace to grasp the grace. How significant is it that Jesus, in our gospel reading this morning, at the very beginning of the passage, prefaced his grace call to love enemies with the words, I say this to you who are listening. Only if we keep closely attuned to the words and person of Jesus do the commands of Jesus become possible. We need to be careful not to allow the words of Jesus to become mere slogans to frame and hang on the walls of our homes. Jesus would have his followers take the words off the wall and out of their frames and speak and live them in the center of our living rooms and workplaces at the core of our lives. Love your enemies is Jesus' call to each of us today. For love is the only verb, let me repeat, Love is the only verb that will transform the world. I would like to end my homily today by again returning to the words of Father Bogart, who offered this prayer to aid believers in all of the challenges of Jesus' great sermon. And it goes like this. Dear Lord, grace us to act as your children should loving enemies, as your children should loving enemies as you love them. Grace us to imitate your holiness. Grace me to start in my own backyard, in my home, in my community, in my parish, and as we read so often, in my nation. Wherever I live and move and breathe, 
Grace me to love you as your son loved, the Jesus who loved, who lived for sinners and died, even for his enemies. Amen. Let us now stand and continue our worship and recite together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, we come to the prayers of the faithful, the universal prayers of the church offered to God our Father in heaven. <clears throat> our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we be instruments of God's mercy and kindness by sharing what we have received with others who are hurting. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they work together to reconcile disagreements and bring peace to the world. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have never experienced forgiveness, May they encounter the free and healing gift of forgiveness through someone who loves as Jesus taught. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here today that as Christians, we may go beyond the law of doing good to those who do good to us and begin to love even our enemies, imitating God's kindness to the ungrateful and wicked. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the good work accomplished through our Catholic appeal, may it yield a plentiful harvest as we proclaim his good deeds throughout the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military and first responders, may they find faith in Christ to sustain them in the face of danger. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our parish whom God has called from this world, may they enjoy the peace and life of the heavenly world. We also remember those for whom this holy mass is offered. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our prayer book and the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We also pray for the grace this week to be kind mm -hmm. and forgiving with people we find challenging. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father in heaven, hear these petitions placed before you today. Grant them if they be your will. We pray all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as our gifts are presented and prepared, let us sing number 832 and on the overhead, they'll know we are Christians. We 
We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Oh, praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Doing very well. <laughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Debate the Lord. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. We pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hope, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our bishop, Raphael, our pastor, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Mark, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, mm -hmm. who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
let us offer each other a sign of peace. 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 this way. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hoping. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadow of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot bring. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you. I love you and you Before the uh, final blessing, before the final blessing, um, I would like to uh, make an announcement. On February 23rd, Born of the Spirit Seminar begins in our church. We have Joe Borden, who spoke earlier, who would like to share with us a few words about this beautiful experience. Joe, did I get your name right? Baroden, sorry. Okay, Joe. 
Hello, St. Mark's family. My name's Joe Barodin, and my wife and I, Francesca, we've been members here in the parish uh, just for a couple of months now. But I'd like to share with you about a gift, a gift that you and I have received in the sacrament of baptism. Now, some people, and it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, some people have described our relationship in our lives with the Holy Spirit like going to the beach. And we live in Florida, right? Florida's surrounded by beautiful beaches. Now, some of you may be like I was up until my late 20s. You'd go to the beach, but wouldn't go in the water. You know, they'd stand on the side of the beach looking at the water. The water is the Holy Spirit. Then maybe some of you are, are like, you know, you put your toes in the water. Then maybe go up to your ankles. Some people just want the Holy Spirit completely. They'll dive in head first or go up to their neck or their waist, right? But God will not give us anything that we don't desire with our free will. He gave us a free will, and he totally respects that. Now, I'd say about 35 years ago, I call myself what I call myself as a clock-punching Catholic. I'd come to the front door, punch my time clock. I'd sit down in the pew. Uh, my body was there, but my spirit wasn't. A lump of coal would have been participating more than I was. I'd parked my car in the getaway spot, strategically aimed at the exit, so right after uh, you know the closing prayer, I could run out and beat the crowd, right? And I figured, oh, I did my one hour a week, you know. Okay, God, that's my hour a week. The rest is mine, right? Well, no, it's not. Um, God wants us 24/7, and He loves us completely. I want to share some of the things that happen when we yield to the Holy Spirit, when we give him permission to work through us. Some of the things that happen are we have a deepening awareness of the love of God is one thing, and it's real. I remember I used to like astronomy, and I, the stars are in the sky, they're beautiful. I used to think God was way out there in space, and he's not out there in space. He wants to be in our hearts, but we have to welcome him in. Another is the growth of intimacy with God in prayer. I used to think prayer was just saying the hour far, the hail Mary, and the glory be, right? And it went that away. And no, prayer is communication. Just like with our spouses, if we don't communicate, we can't have a relationship. Well, that's what prayer is. If without prayer, we can't have a relationship with God. So when we yield to the power of the Spirit, he helps us develop that beautiful prayer relationship with God. Another thing that happens is a hunger for God's word in the scriptures. And I remember people saying this, and I eventually experienced it. When you start reading the scriptures and yield to the Holy Spirit, it's like the words jump off the pages at times, and the scriptures will touch you to the bottom of your heart. Another is this, the celebration of mass comes alive. Like I said, I used to be a lump of coal. Now I come to... Uh, to Mass, and it's like a beautiful prayer of praise and worship. Healing to various parts of our lives occurs when we yield to the power of the Spirit. The power to forgive the unforgivable in our lives. God forgives us. The Holy Spirit then gives us the power to forgive others in our lives. And to do like the Gospel said today, to love our enemies. And sometimes our enemies are our own family, right? And sometimes we can be our family's enemies, the way we treat each other sometimes. Another is we experience the promptings and the guidance of the Spirit. We learn to recognize that in our lives so we can act on it. So what I'd like to do is invite you to the Born of the Spirit seminar. We have flyers in the back of the church. There should be people at the doors handing them out. The seminar is uh, starting Wednesday, this Wednesday, for five Wednesdays in a row. And for people that don't like to drive in the dark, we're starting it at 3.30, and it'll be over by 5 o'clock, so you won't have to drive home in the dark. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I went to one of these 35 years ago and completely changed my life. So we invite you to come. There's also a table in the back to sign up so we can get your uh, email and phone number so we can contact you. And it's a great way to start Lent. So Jesus loves you, and so do I. Come to the Born of the Spirit Seminar. Let us pray. Prayer is over here. Mm -hmm. 
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these holy mysteries. We pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is over. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and have Eucharistic ministers taking communion to the sick. They may come forward at this time to receive their hosts, and we ask that you take with you the concern and love and prayers of the people of St. Mark's Parish as they uh, worship God together. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that, that we, we may, may journey, journey together, together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Let every creature rise and bring blessing and honor to our King. Angels descend with its songs again, and earth repeat the loud Amen. And to our King be highest praise, rising through eternal days. Just and faithful He shall reign, Jesus shall reign.